Hello, welcome to Star Wars Spelt Out. I'm your host, Josh Chapman. And today we're back. We're back to a man on the run again. Episode two. Uh, smaller deck this time. We've had a few. Uh, we've lost a few along the way. But um, like Bo Katan and Din Djarin, you've got the core. You've got the core ones that everyone comes for anyway. So Catherine's here. Hey, how, how you going, Catherine? I'm just luxuriating on my throne, waiting for someone to turn up to the door. <laughs> We'll get to that, but uh, yeah, Matt uh, Matt Moll's got a few issues with uh, his little little boy is unwell, and and Dale's stuck at work. So, you know, we try to keep get this thing out as soon as we can, so we can't just muck around waiting for those guys. But um, it's good just to you know have the team here, and um, I won't, we'll go into details, but I would say uh, a little bit of an improvement on last week. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And I know it's funny because yes. you were very conscious of like, oh God, like after we finished, like, oh God, I feel like I was being such a negative Nancy about it. I feel like I was being too negative on it. <laughs> and then there was so much negative stuff around. I'm like, Catherine, <laughs> you were pretty light on compared to some of the stuff going around. I was, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny that I was like checking in with, with you and then with, you know, other sort of chat groups going, oh, I was, I was pretty negative. I was pretty negative. And then I, yeah, listened to other podcasts. I'm like, Ah, no, I wasn't. <laughs> I was pretty diplomatic at all when you really think about it. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. you know, that's that's the game, man. You know, like you speak your mind. I, I wouldn't want you to not speak, speak, speak your mind and speak how you feel about it. But it was a pretty mixed bag of uh, thoughts last week. And I think we probably, we were pretty somewhere in the reasonable middle, I think. And I think that's probably where a lot of people felt on yeah. it. Um, yeah, but and this week was fun. This week was you know, really good. Um, yeah, actually, just before we go any further, I think what we'll try and do is we might do a little bit of celebration talk when we finish rounding up Mando just because the stuff has dropped, and obviously, because we're not you know, the show is Mando focused at the moment, sometimes the other Star Wars stuff can fall by the way. So, if you want to hear us talk a little bit of celebration stuff, we'll try and get into a little bit at the end because why not? Stuff's a cooking. Oh yeah. <laughs> Stuff is a cooking. So I'm going to treat this like the pepper pod, um, Catherine, where I go to Matt and I go, "What go? What went down in Mando this week?" So give me the give me the quick synopsis. Give me the quick over over um overarching thoughts, or overarching plot. Well, I think there were puddles. Um, so Pepper might have liked that. Mando and Grogu went to see Pally to get the part for the droid and very quickly that that was shut down, that storyline. However, R5 took the place. Yeah. so the, And really a far more appropriate droid for their ship. Well, the, the IG-11 stuff just got completely resolved. Just they showed up to, to Pally and she's just like, nah, too hard, too hard basket. And they went, oh, okay. So that thread that... It really just seemed to be an excuse to have IG-11 in the first episode, unless that come back, comes back to play later where it comes back from the dead again and tries to kill Grogu <laughs> or something, whether they're going to dangle that thread. But it was kind of weird, wasn't it, that he just sort of... Like, it was nice yeah. to see Pally and the droids. W- she had some sort of hustle that she yeah, was running at the start too. Oh, an absolute, absolute hustle. You know, she's got the Jawas on it, uh, you know, Steel for what is it? not steel for hire, but um, yeah, you know, tail nick the parts get, get and then the, sell them back to yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, that that's some dodgy stuff right there. Um, not that that would ever happen, you know, at, at chop shots that we know of. No. Um. Yeah, but yeah, nice to see a Pally and. Uh, the pit droids and R five getting a mm. starring role. Still hanging in there, R five. Really? <laughs> oh. Well, I was a bit surprised. I just wasn't expecting to go back to Tatooine. I just kind of it was kind of weird when I like, like, sort of pulled on and went, "Ah, oh, what are we going? What? Why are we going to Tatooine for? Like, what's the reasoning behind that?" Um, and it was I mean, Boonta Eve sense. as well. What? Yeah, well, Boonta Eve being that was fun, um, but it did make sense when we knew that. Uh, 
you know, Din wanted some droid parts. You know, Pally had said previously the Jawas can source pretty much anything. Yep. Uh, so going to Pally you know, makes sense because, you know, she wouldn't really ask questions either. Uh, so that's good. But you're right that the IG-11 is sort of as a possibility. You, th- you think it's It's just a weird shoe dangled. leather thing, isn't it? Like you could have just gone yeah. to Pally and asked for a droid. You didn't really need to bring IG-11 back, but I guess <laughs> well, you're going to that planet anyway, so I don't know. Why not? I mean, I guess you've got to have yeah. something in the show, but uh, yeah, it was still it was nice. To get. So what, know, is Boon- what is Boonta? If Boonta e- is Boonta Eve the, like, the day before Boonta? Is it like New Year's Day or Christmas? Or, I mean, I'm sure you could yeah, probably Google it, Wikipedia it or something. Yeah. The... um. The pod race was a Bunta Eve classic, was it? Was that what the um, pod race was in episode one? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it must be, yeah, like a, a New Year's type of celebration or a, a festival day, call it go. that. I'm, I'm looking up yeah. Bunta on w- Wikipedia. No, it's, it's just like, given me you know, a how we have. Uh, um, you know, public holiday and then, you know, a horse race or some kind of race yeah, associated like cup day, with isn't it, a public really? holiday. Yeah. I'm just yeah. trying to find whether it's a, you know, like a, like a religious holiday or whether it's a, whether, like you said, if it's just like a, Boonta's Eve was said to derive from Boonta the Hutt's speech to his kin. Well, loyal retainers and favoured slaves the night before the third world event or Boonta proclaimed he would sooner rather live in the rule of humans. The Hutt's were victorious. So it's some kind of hut victory related thing which is a bit weird but okay so it's like it's like their independence day yeah yeah so now i'm picturing bill pullman yeah as as a hut as a hut as a hut delivering a bill pullman as a hut as a hut delivering a stirring speech yeah with that, not even Jabba's voice, with that other hut. With who's the one? Zero the hut. It's like, today is the day oh. that we do our independence. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. Of all the huts to deliver a stirring speech, it has to be that guy. One day I hope he comes back. Yes. I do like that. I do like Zero the hut just because he's so terrible. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm all for that. Um, but there was some nice... Uh, some some nice fireworks and, stuff. and we we established, which I guess we'd already established previously, that um, Grogu's got a little leap leap action going on. Yeah, he's got his little force jump rolling pretty heavy. Yeah, so he's he's starting to use the force with a bit more purpose than what he did prior to his training when it was a bit more instinctual. Mm. He kind of knows he can do can... he can pull a few tricks out of yeah. his out of his bag. Yeah, um, yeah. But that was a nice little thing. And then he sort of like, and he definitely was more vocal in this episode too than he's ever been before as well. Yeah, he's he's verbalising. Um, it's still baby talk, but it's, uh, this sounds really bad, but it's like when, you know, I used to talk to my cat, um, not Jack, he doesn't verbalise that much, but previous cats who verbalised a lot, you can have quite a conversation with a cat who will tell you, all about the weather outside, how they don't like it. <laughs> right. Well, good to know. Good to know. Mm. Um, I only have you know children to go off on that, and yeah, we get a bit of that too. So it's, yeah, it seems to be. I don't know. It still seems to be vocal things of about a one-year-old rather than a two or three-year-old, which I kind of felt he was closer. To, I mean, as far as his behaviour, feels closer to sort of three, but verbally yeah. probably closer to one. But uh, hmm. anywho, we do get R5 and, and Pally basically uh, says, hey, you know what, this this crappy droid that's been around forever. It was a nice little moment where she sort of goes, oh, he's, you know, he done, he's done his service to the rebellion. Yeah. So where did he end up? Someone in Legends will be able to, to figure out, someone yeah. will be able to figure out where he ended up. Because obviously he didn't, he didn't go with but- Luke and, and Owen. So he would have gone back no. into the... Uh, Back into the sand crawler, so to speak. So he must have got picked up at some point. Was, was it in EU? I'm just going through from what I've heard. 
was it in AU or just someone's canon? This is causing me pain. Um, that R5 oh, deliberately like did something to himself so, to get R2 to Luke. Is this? I think there is some sort of legends weird thing that even there was like a Jedi trapped in there or it had the force or something stupid like oh. that. I don't think that's canon, but I'm just curious. I mean, it's so bad. But she is implied that he was involved with the rebellion at some point. This isn't this far up, far after Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So I'm assuming that, I don't know, someone will know. Bad, bad motivators should know. It's their bloody mascot. So yeah. they must be having a party right now because it was more R4, R5 bang for your buck than... You yeah. know what to do with it. But reluctant hero, R5, yeah, very much forced shit. into it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, she got it. Of... Sorry, it's scary. Yeah. Well, it's funny because she does retcon the, the end one to put the, the droid hole back in there and after all of that. So Grogu's kind of <laughs> lost his little car seat. He's got he's to get a bigger ship at some point. But anyway. Um, yeah. So what was quite good about this episode, because I think we spoke about this last week, was just I think I said, like, I hope we just resolve this minds of men like bathing in the water of the minds of mandalore soon like this isn't just going to drag out for the whole series and he's just going to be like trying to get there trying to get there um so it was quite good that they got straight to mandalore um although i gotta say i don't know about you didn't seem that bad like bad but not bad enough that you wouldn't be able to rebuild well obviously the the stories have been put around to that it's yet yeah, you know inhabitable or not that's the wrong word not inhabitable no inhabitable that's, Can't that, believe- that's correct i think um but you know maybe there were you know straight afterwards there were like droids roaming around you know still killing anyone who approached so it was just no, we've got to stay off of there. I I don't know, but I kind of feel right, like maybe you know you look at a place like something. Mustafar or Camino, which is basically it's all just lava, and they still have settlements there, or it's just all <laughs> water, and they still put a city there. I, I kind of feel like that you could have you could have rebuilt. It wouldn't have been that difficult. Yeah, yeah. Now that especially now that the empire's gone, you think yeah something could be done there. Yeah, I, I thought that'd be the first thing that they would do. They just go back there and like if they were if they're like running their cult like next to a lake with a giant crocodile in it. That doesn't that seems just as dangerous as going back to your home planet. <gasps> like maybe the Wi-Fi is not as good, but yeah. And Din Djarin said that he grew up on like the moon Concord. Mm. That was the name There's of the, the moon, Death wasn't Watch it? Moon or whatever. So it that was, was- yeah, Death Watch. Um, so, yeah, that was in a number of Mandalore episodes of The Clone Wars. But it's right near Mandalore. Surely at some stage they go, you know, have a good old sticky beak to see what's going on. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know if there's more to it or if they're just like, don't worry about it. It's just the way that it is. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah. Din, Din gets down to the surface. He sends R four out on a little mission to check if the air's any good. Um, I guess the idea was I, that I was so worried about R five. R five, so yeah, so worried. Well, he did fall down that hole, which I assume is why you get an IG droid because it's got arms and legs. It can probably get down a hole a little bit easier. Yeah, and defend itself against. Um, anything that comes after it. I was so worried of it just like rolling along the surface because I was thinking that it looked like a frozen pond or something mm. and I was just waiting for it to crack and it just R5 like drop straight down the thing. Drop. Yeah, drop through like, yeah, frozen ice. No, we just kind of fell down the hole, didn't he really? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they sort of like <laughs> ape creatures or whatever they were had anything to do with it, but... Um... Yeah, so he falls down the hole, Din goes after him. And it was kind of weird, actually, because he just kind of goes, all right, well, I'll, I'll guess I'll just... I didn't want to have to do this, but I'll guess I'll just go out there and I'll have a look. I'm like, oh, man, like, if something goes south, Grogu could be just stuck on there, stuck in that ship <laughs> on a planet that you can't breathe the air. And it just felt like, I don't know, too many risks are being taken. Yeah. I 
now I'm picking holes apart in it, which I don't, you know, so why couldn't R5 just do the atmosphere from where he was on the ship? Like you want to see the general atmosphere. But anywho, he, Dean Jaren sends him towards the settlement and then, yeah, has to go after him and then that gets attacked by, yeah, cave monsters with big spiky yeah, some good prosthetic things. work going on there. I thought I looked like it was dudes in suits, yeah. and that was looking pretty good. And he kind of fights them off. Very and... Harry, ha- Harry, what's his name? I'm f- I'm on fire tonight. <laughs> not being able to talk. <laughs> um, I know he took Harry, the stop ha- motion yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But he does. He gets anyway. The air's all right. So him and Grog. And it, it was kind of funny because I didn't really. Because they got it got to the edge, and I went, "Oh, like is he going to pick him up and take him down the jetpack?" And then his little floaty thing just sort of descends down the thing. I went, "Oh yeah, that's probably obvious." Duh, of course they just go down the they go down the mm-hmm. shaft, and um, they uh, sort of get through the city and they find a hole and they start looking around for uh, for the mine entrance. And then um, yeah, Din walks into a into a trap, a well laid trap. So, yeah, there were creepy lizard things watching their every move and Grogu was scared. Mm. So he then had to go closer to Daddy. Um, but, yeah, that trap that was with the helmet on the ground, I could have sworn there was something crawling in it, but no, there was just <laughs> It was something big... a bit more we hit. It was like a big crab machine monster thing. Who snapped yeah. up in, and then we and then we sort of got the reveal that it was like, now, did you go? I mean, I had a, a second. I've gone. Oh my god, this isn't General Grievous, is it? Have they found a way to bring General? Gri- <sighs> like, is it General? Have they actually like brought General Grievous back, no, and he's been hiding in no, this mine? And and because no. for a second there, like no. he had the similar <laughs> eye, he had the similar like bunch of arms, the spindly kind of thing. I was, I I was waiting for it, but it just happened to be a sort of a creepy creature in a. Robot ex- exo exo skeleton suit. God, I can't speak either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sort of you know, exited the um big the robot thing, thing yeah. and I was like, "What the hell is that?" It was very sort of alien predator type of thing to me. Mm. You know, but I don't go in for scary monsters, so Ugh. it was a good design. Um, it was cool. It was you know, it was creepy and it was very cool looking. But I just kept going, "Oh my god, it's taking a general grievous." Because he had like the stick with the thing on the end, you know, like the you remember like the his oh, guards yeah, the, had the sticks in Revenge of the Sith. Yep. I'm like, "Oh no, they they are they, are they really going to do this? Are they going to general <laughs> grievous it?" And I'm going because I remember that you know some people managed to see these first two episodes early, and then I was, I was going, "Oh, if they if General Grievous had turned up in this, I think." It might, it, somebody would have, you know what I mean? They wouldn't have been able to contain themselves. Yeah. Somebody would have leaked that. <laughs> um, speaking of leaking, and I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but did you watch the recap before the thing or did you skip the recap? No, watch the recap. As soon as they mentioned the Always. mythosaur, I was like, ah, oh, the mythosaur is going to be in this. Like it's like the, the fact that they dropped that in the recap where she's like, where oh, is the mighty mythosaur? I'm like... Okay. Oh, there's, there's going to be a mythosaur. Like, wh- why mention it in the recap? They just implanted that thought into my brain that that was going to happen. I think I don't think I th- thought we'd see an actual one, or I thought we might see representations of it. I don't know. Oh no, I, I was know, like, but- I can't. I mean, we'll get to what actually happens, and it wasn't quite what yeah. I thought would. But I'm just gonna, as soon as they they drop the name in the in the recap. I thought, oh, oh they're going to do it. I'm like, which, which I'm like, great. I just wish I hadn't have had that planted into my brain before we came out. But yeah. uh, anyway, General Grievous. Um, <laughs> General, Not General, General Grievous. It is until I'm told otherwise. That's what all that's left. All that was left was a head with a couple of spindly legs. Have you seen the no, episode? Of, he have you he seen, exploded pretty, pretty good. Have you seen the episode of Red Dwarf? Have you seen Red Dwarf? Bits and bobs. A lot of it. Have you seen the episode yeah. where Crichton crash lands on a planet and he has to detach his uh, his hand 
to go and send for help and he puts the eyeball on the hand and it's like walking along yes. like a, it's got little eyeball on it and it like the oh. whole thing is where it goes up Lister's boxer shorts and things and then that's what I kept thinking of if I could find a photo oh of God. it if I if I could find a photo of it I'm going to put that online because that just literally kept thinking I kept thinking of that episode of Red Dwarf with the little Crichton's yeah. like spare eye on his hand crawling along the ground um people who know will know and other people will think I'm crazy. Yeah. I think I have to find that clip. Um, but yeah, he put uh, Din Djarin in like a um, cage type of thing, not vertically but horizontally. Yeah, it was almost like a coffin cage or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very tightly fitting, so he couldn't move, and over like a heat source and rotating him. So I have to say, my thought went. Is he cooking Din Djarin? Like in a boiling like, in his suit and then doing? take the best guy out kind of thing or Well we fight, like later on like we they come back to it and he's he's like taking his like trying to drain his blood. So maybe he does just like I'll just wither him from the inside and then basically all I'll get left is all this lovely best guy and I'll throw it in the pile, I guess. Was he draining his blood or pumping him full of something? Oh, I didn't think of that. I just assumed it was draining. Was... Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, mm. I don't know. I couldn't tell the direction. With the direction. Of the thing, yeah. You're too busy going, ooh. ooh. Um, so anyway, he does get captured in the thing and then he, he, he go, tells Grogu to go find Bo-Katan, um, which Grogu does show a lot of initiative. He gets back to the ship. He gets in the cockpit. He gets the R5 he... and points on the little map of the little planet that he wants to yep. go to. And, um, Not without incident, he had to defend himself. Oh yeah, yeah, we, which is the clip that was in the trailer uh, as well too. So yeah, he runs into a couple of those yeah. those um, ape creature things, and he, he dispatches yeah. of those pretty well. Um, yeah. And then back to the planet of Bo of Bo Katan, who's still just sitting on that throne. <laughs> yep. It was kind of funny because there's all there's been all these jokes of you know during the week of there. Yeah, I think there was a really good TikTok of. Someone dressed as Bo-Katan and she's like in her pajamas yeah. and she's just like on her phone and she hears the, the ship coming. So she quickly she's like, oh, she, she, she's like running and she's putting her helmet on and, her, you know, getting all ready to, you know, to get on the thing. But in this case, she's just sitting on the throne, just kind of like just looking at the floor. <laughs> yeah. And then her droid tells her that the, that the ship's coming back. And she's a bit like, oh, well, <clears throat> I'm going to tell him where to go once and for all. Yeah, who comes over and announced your text first? Twice, yeah. I've already eaten the good biscuits, <laughs> you know, all all that kind of stuff. The yeah. um, but yeah, when when she saw it was just Grogu, she was very quickly okay. Something's something's bad. Something's gone wrong. Yeah, where's Dinjarin? And um, yeah, they get in a ship and they shoot on down. To Mandalore, and it looks like that basically she hasn't been back either. Which is just weird. No. Like you'd feel like the curiosity would get the better, especially with the worst case is that you can't breathe the air. Well, you know, you're wearing a helmet most of the time anyway. Like even doing a flyby, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It like, just seemed a little bit weird that she hadn't been, that no one had been down to check it out. Yeah, like I get that it's emotional seeing your home in ruins and it would bring back memories of yeah, the war and just terrible devastation. It'd be awful to see it in that state. But you're right to that to be so close even and to yeah, not even have a flyby and do some scans or something. I mean, I don't know how well their scanners work. Obviously not as good as the Star Trek scanners. Mm. Uh <laughs> Well, for a bunch of people who are constantly fighting with each other and talking about claiming their birthrights and their homelands and all this stuff, and that's their whole jam, nobody's yeah. gone down to check what's going on. <laughs> They're all just like, well, <laughs> the homeland's obviously crap. We don't even need to worry about that. But we're all worried. We're all concerned about preserving our way of life. But no one's actually going to go down there and send a couple of droid probe droids down or something. But anyway. Yeah, because that's all you'd have to do. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, so she gets down there. She has a few run-ins as well with a couple of these creatures, and um, yeah. proceeds to run into General Grievous and uh, 
and taking him down. Now, Dark Saber, da- is she technically yeah. the holder of the Dark Saber now? Din lost it in I was a fight, about this. and then she won it back from the dude. Well, she got it in the fight. Technically, beat the guy who beat Din yeah. Jaren. So I'm going to evoke the rules of the wands in Harry Potter. Okay. That if you defeat a wizard, you um, if you disarm their with their wand or something, you can claim their wand, and their wand is now yours, type of thing. Mm-hmm. So this is what happened with the Elder Wand. And so, yeah, I was thinking, okay, so Monster defeated Din Djarin. So Monster is now the owner of the Dark, Black, Black Saber. Saber. Yep, yep. Dark, Dark Saber. Saber. Yep. Dark Saber. Don't come after me. <laughs> um, and yet bo defeated Monster. So, yeah, is she then the true holder? But is it... <sighs> Because the monster didn't claim it in combat, I don't know. But well, it was kind of combat, or was it because it was sneaky? Yeah. Still, yeah. I, I mean, I know they got their own kind of bullshit <laughs> rules about this thing. You know, like obviously when what's yeah. his face, um, you know, the big boyly Mandalorian in Book of Boba Fett, try like he's literally like, I want to fight you for that dark saber, oh, and he accepts a Viz- Vizsla. Pa- yeah, Paz Vizsla, or his name is, or whatever, one of the Vizslas. Yeah. Um, and Din Djarin's like, yeah, bring it on. Let's fight for it. You know, that was a bit more formal. But at the same time, it's like he wasn't asking Moff Gideon for permission. They just fought and he won. Yeah. So I don't know. It just kind of yeah. felt like after after it kind of got resolved and he was packing and grabbing his weapons and things, it felt like she was kind of looking like, uh, <clears throat> I think technically that is uh, my dark saber now. Um, but maybe that wasn't the time and the place it- to do it maybe. Yeah, that also, there's that, if she has to then tell the story, you know, the how she got it, you know, re- yeah, how she got it, or, you know, Din Djarin, he was ambushed by a monster, and then I went and beat up the monster. Is that a grand tale of reclaiming Mandalore's birthright? Yeah, I suppose. No. You could always embellish it a little bit, I suppose. Considering it yeah. didn't seem like Din Djarin really gave a shit, he might just be like, yeah, fine. If, if technically you've got it now and this beef is over, I'll go along yeah. with the story as long as I don't, you know, come off looking too terrible at the end. As long as you're not saying I wet my pants or something. Yeah. Like, as long as it's sort of... <laughs> and and can we just say she used it much better. She's not weighed down by it. She can actually wield it. Yeah, yeah. So she had some very good moves. So she sort of chopped the legs off that crab machine thing pretty easily and chopped up General Grievous pretty good without uh, w- without too much trouble. So, yeah, they managed to free Din and um, they get through all of that and he's going, oh, no, look, I've still got to go get in this, get in this water. <laughs> Again, not that hard to find. Apparently, according to everybody mm-hmm. else, it's like this thing that is long gone and it's no way and it can't happen. And she's just like, yeah, it's just down here. Come on, I'll show you. Yeah. So, just- I mean, I know that cults and crazy religions have their way of controlling people and, you know, distorting truths and <laughs> withholding information. So I suppose it's very possible that they're basically telling them whatever they've got to tell them to keep them in line. Um, Again, farcical aquatic ceremonies <laughs> is not the basis for a system of government. Absolutely. I started. I fell down a rabbit hole of Monty Python clips after we had that discussion on YouTube the other day. <laughs> so it showed that uh, that Xanthi Tan on Star Wars Minute was asking a question about its score, and I was like, "Oh, Monty Python did this thing." And she's like, "Oh, that's cool. It's not quite what I was asking." I'm like, "Oh, sorry. I just I'd fallen down a Monty Python hole. So I'm sorry, Xanthi, if I'd gotten that wrong. Shout out if you're listening." Um, so basically, yeah, they get to the they get to the water, and it's all there, and um, and uh, Din does the, the ceremony and drops his weapons and, and gets in. And it's quite interesting because it's sort of – she's very dismissive. She's just like, oh, this stupid ceremony that they kind of made me do and whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I kind of just did it because my dad told me to and blah, blah, blah. Um, is her dad alive in the Clone Wars cartoons? Well, I'd say no because her sister, Duchess Satine, is the ruler of Mandalore. Straight away from that point. Yep. Okay. Obi Wan squeeze. 
Yep. Yep. Corky's quote unquote aunt. <laughs> but that's the whole other th- theory there. Oh right, yeah. Okay, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'll leave that to the to the conspiracy theorists on that one. Um so it's quite interesting because he go, he goes and he, he starts reciting the creed and she does seem to kind of just like revere the respect for the ceremony. You know what I mean? Like she kind of goes, oh, wow, like yeah. he, he really like believes this thing. Um, yeah. And, you know, res- yeah, respects that he respects it as well, that it, it's meaningful to him to do this. Yeah. And I think in a way sort of remembering that, you know, probably at the time it was very meaningful to for her before she came, she got all very cynical. Now, does he get dragged under or does he literally just fall because he's got his armour and he doesn't have his jetpack? Does he get dragged or does he just go off the edge because he doesn't? He just sinks and he doesn't have his jetpack? Yeah, he just... Because he kind of takes that step somewhat, and just goes zhunk straight yeah, down. Just, yeah, just... Drops and you would think if he was dragged down by something, there would be something sort of near him, like holding him in a yeah, and dragging you know, him down as, as he goes. And also, yeah, like why would it just let go of him and prop him on the bottom? Like if it was going to drag him, why wouldn't it just eat him yeah. or whatever it's doing? Yeah, I couldn't or quite. I'd have to re watch and have Bro a watch it again down. and go, I. Assume that he got dragged, like R2 style in Empire, you know, like gets dragged under kind of thing. Yeah. But then the more I thought about it, I'm like, did he just literally just walk off the last step and it's just a 200-meter drop <laughs> to the bottom of the lake? Yeah. Which is kind of yeah. s- bit- strange that that would, <laughs> that would be the case. It would just go, <laughs> you just walk from that end and it would just be completely dark and you're in your... your uh... Best car and, yeah, that just... Drop like a stone. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's twice that Bo Katan saves him. Excuse me. Yeah. Well, she leaps. She leaps in and uh, and follows her down and, and zips on down and then grabs him off the bottom of the water and then you get the big reveal at the end that there's a myth. Is it mythosaur? There's a big bloody mythosaur at the bottom of the. Uh... Yeah, the big Loch Ness monster. So it's effectively like if there's a Loch Ness monster, isn't it? So it's a creature that's kind of. A myth, but no one's ever really seen. It's called a mythosaur. Oh, well, no, it's called a mythosaur. I know. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah. But in this, I mean, I know like yeah. in the Star Wars holiday special or whatever, wasn't he writing one in that or was that just a, was something else? But I. Yeah, it was a green dinosaur. It's sort of like a legends thing. It's like saying that our ancestors rode dinosaurs or something where it's kind of like, well, maybe timeline yeah. doesn't really match up, but dinosaurs existed, but, you know, legend. Or dragons, I suppose, you know, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, because I don't think bo gave any sort of indication that she believed that the Mythosaur or anything lived in that lake. No, I think she just thought so, it was a story that just, you know, like everything else. It was yeah. just part of the part of the jam. So obviously, you know, she pulls Din up at the end and she looks visibly like, holy crap, like the legend was true kind of thing. But I, So I don't know, mm. like, what do you think the knock-on effect of this is? Is, is it Din Djarin went into the water with a dark saber and a mythosaur was down there? Or is it more just like Mandalore's alive because the thing that founded the planet is alive down there? Or I mean, I thought when they mentioned mythosaur at the start, I thought, okay, he's going to be right. He's going to be on top of that mythosaur at the end of this episode. The sting will be, he'll be like on, like literally riding it. And maybe that'll still happen. Yeah. Maybe there'll be some big battle on Mandalore because they all find out that it is actually habitable and Din will pop out of the mm-hmm. ground on a mythosaur and, you know, brrr, you know, that sounds like a very Favreau, Filoni thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably where at some point it's headed or some kind of communing with the mythosaur, but... Yeah, there's all these, like, the Mandalorians turn up and all these people come to Mandalore to fight for it and they're all about to fight and he just comes up in the middle on his bloody mythosaur and... (laughs) Stop fighting, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) I'll give you all a can of Pepsi for peace. Um, (laughs) Or a pot of that. What was the pog stew or whatever it was? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, 
Have a nice bowl of pog stew. Yeah. Again, this sort of yeah Mandalorian classic. I guess it's like if you're Australian, you know, there's a there's a mug of Milo. You know, what's a mug of Milo? Mug of oh, mug Milo. of Milo. I thought you were talking. <laughs> I thought you were talking about oh, you know, like we like this Australia have mythical creatures. You know, like you know, there's like Sasquatches, drop bears, drop bear, or bunyips. You know, like a bunyip is a is a mythical yeah. Australian creature. Or, you know, it's like a Sasquatch or a Loch Ness monster. Right? I literally thought you said a mug of Milo was a like. I thought that's what you're playing. I'm like, I've never heard of a mug of Milo. You're like, no, a uh, mug of a drink, Milo drink, like an actual I know, mug. I know. I no, can't no, that's that's me. <laughs> that's that's my fault. I don't know what a mug of Milo is. That's a, quite a good name for a mythical creature, though. A strange creature, a mug of Milo. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that will cure all ills. Mm, that is true. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm, gl- I'm glad that they've resolved the bathing in the water thing. So now, as far as he's concerned, he's a Mandalorian. Whether or not they actually are going to accept him or not might be another story. It might just be, he might just go back no, and go. They're not. I just did it, and they're like, "Well, we never really wanted you to come back anyway, so yeah. sucks to be you." You know, go. Yeah. Where's your proof, buddy? Yeah, I don't know how that works. Like, Boca Tang could have got, got her phone out or something and like recorded him doing it or something, but but uh, that's the thing. Like, she might be like, "Oh, Boca Tan was there." Like, well, we don't really care what Boca Tan says. You know, yeah. we're more interested in actually being factioned than we are of getting along. Um, but I'm yeah. glad this bit's resolved. So whatever's happening now, we can escalate off the back of this. Yeah, it's... Yeah, so we know, okay, Mandalore is, you know, not poisoned. But, yeah, it's that question of, well, what does Bo-Katan want to do now and how does she then get Din Djarin? to be part of the cause because that's really what this season sort of is feeling like that's you know, getting the Mandalorians together to take back Mandalore. Well, yeah. I mean, now that it's, it's habitable and there's a mythosaur there, it feels like mm. I've, the incentive is, is, is to claim the planet rather than really just being the leader. I mean, cause it kind of feels like before she's like, yeah. well, I want to be the leader of the people of whatever that is. And now it's like, well, no, yeah. actually now I want to be the leader of Mandalore and bring Mandalore back. Yeah. Um, and it's that because there is a Mandalore in essence in that, it, yes, it might be ruined, but, you know, they, it's inhabitable somewhat. That's a purpose to which people might flock to her cause even without the Darksaber by her, you know, her wielding it because Din Djarin might be by her side wielding it. Yeah. So the two of them together. Um, a huge improvement from last week. I mean, I, I really thought oh, that last yes. week might have been the weakest episode that they'd ever done on this. <laughs> and I don't think – and that's probably pretty fair because the standard's pretty high and I thought that one kind of meandered along. Um, yeah. I thought this one was really good. It was really focused. It, it was really, you know, some cool – directing the shots were great it looked it looked great it's like wow like the yes. scale was huge I had some fun little action we got to see pally again um it was yeah it was a really good episode which is good because i want it to be good i don't want it to not be good it's you know we want star wars to be good so i'm it's good it's better yeah. when it's good and yeah it was great like grogu you the little puppet is like he moves like a little puppet, but it's so cute. And they've got good puppet action mm. just throughout. And I'm so glad that they are embracing the puppet, like for just puppets in general. It just it gives everything you know more weight, just a, a better sense of realness to have you know something there. And oh yes, and R five, poor old R five. Well, he made it out alive, so yeah, he didn't. He wasn't just. And he's watching everything the, on TV. Yeah, he, yeah, he's just like I'll just watch from the safety, net, which was weird too, because that that even that felt a bit weird. Where he's like, he just flicked it on to watch, and yeah. like maybe that'll come back later. Maybe the recording of Bo Katan on Mandalore means something. I don't know. Like it just seemed weird that they made it to the point yeah. to show that that was being basically videoed. 
Um, maybe that'll yeah. play into something else. Um, right. Yeah, R5 could have recorded the the bathing in the waters. So yeah, they don't really have they haven't quite mastered portable recording devices in Star Wars, have they? It's always weird. The tech's always a bit more seventies, <laughs> except for the space travel and the and all that kind of business. Um, yeah. Right. Well, I think we'll put a pin in it. I think we've covered, especially just between the two of us. Um, but let's while we've got you here. Let's just yep. let's just pivot to celebration because we got yes. panel news today. Woohoo. Woohoo. I woke up this morning and there were panels. So all the uh, Facebook groups about celebration were full of people going, This is my first celebration. How do I get in? Where's my which doesn't you know, how do I do this? And I'm just I just like wrote to back to you like, It's all right, the email will be coming out soon, there'll be a lottery, blah blah blah. <laughs> Some person was like, they might not do lotteries. They only did that for COVID. I'm like, no, they didn't. But they did it in Chicago before then, you know, pre-COVID. Yep. Um, so anyway, it's not all the panels. It's just the big, just the, the sort of the major ones that are on the big stages. Uh, I yeah. can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but basically there's another Lucasfilm showcase. So that's the big Friday, the first panel yep. on the Friday. Like we had in yep, Anaheim. from like 11 to 12.30. Yep, so I think that that will be Skeleton Crew, There'll be Acolyte, an, an indie. indie, maybe something on Labyrinth if they're going to do more Labyrinth. I'm not Labyrinth, bloody, what's the other one? Willow. If they end up doing more with you, Willow, they've got anything to say about that. Uh, yeah, the, the basically there will be a, a second season because they very much – Left it as that was volume one. And oh no, I, I'm sure they want to. Volumes. It'll just be whether you know yeah. they, it's done the numbers to cough up the cash for it. But uh, yeah, um, so I think yeah, it'll be Acolyte Skeleton Crew. We'll probably get a Skeleton Crew trailer. I don't know about Acolyte. I don't know how far along that is. You might get a teaser. They've been filming it. There might be something yeah. to show, and then hopefully some movie news as well. Um, I'm a little surprised that that. Um, Skeleton Crew doesn't have its own panel, but I guess we sort of we said that last time about Andor that how much can they really say? Yeah. I mean, they didn't do a panel for Obi Wan either because it was sort of like, well, we're not going to tell you anything about it just before it comes out, so yeah. it's a lot easier not to. So that was the that was yeah we saw it that night, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a Thursday, the first day. Yeah, last year, wasn't it? Because I think yeah. we were just going well. Basically, they're not going to tell you, spoil it the day before it comes out. They're just going to wait. <laughs> um, and I think with Skeleton Crew is the same. Like I think they'll 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 show whatever they want to share, but they're not going to dedicate an hour to it because they don't want to give too much away yet. Yeah. Um, so that's the. I'll just do the big ones. I know there's one you want to double back onto, but the Saturday mm-hmm. big panel is the Soka. Yeah. Um, which is cool. So that means they're going to dig into that, which is interesting because I think Ahsoka and Skeleton Crew are both supposed to come out this year. But I suppose with Ahsoka, yeah. maybe you can show more because you already know that it's going to have Ahsoka, you know, or you know that's going to have some, you know what I mean? Like there's probably more yeah. that you can talk about vaguely. I think with Skeleton Crew, yeah. because we know nothing, they're probably not going to give much away at all. Whereas Ahsoka, you could say, like, well, we can at least tell you that Sabine's in it and Something. Hera and things yeah. that you probably already expect. Well, you think back in 2019 in Chicago, we had a Mandalorian panel and that was before Mandalorian was released. Yep. And we saw a clip then. So, yeah, no baby Grogu. It was the um, basically the scene where he met the client, although I can't remember it clearly enough to say that there were little differences but apparently there were that just sort of from cut people who've watched out. the potato can yeah i'd have to i don't think i've ever re-seen the footage actually um no so that's the so there's a soaker panel that's on the saturday and then the sunday yeah. big panel is the is that the villains of the, the villains sequel? Of the sequel trilogy which is e mcdermott andy circus gwendolyn christie Yes. No, Domino Gleason. He's British. Couldn't. We? Oh, I might be Irish. Sorry if I'm insulting him there. Surely he could mm. pop over. Um, interesting. I don't know whether that's major panel lottery worthy. 
Man, yeah. well, considering that there's a Obi Wan panel with Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor going to be there, I kind of thought that would have been more. Box yeah, that's office. Some, yeah, like one thirty on the Sunday. That yeah, that's yeah, that's your big panel. Well, maybe really. that just is because they've got to work around autographs, and that's why they're putting it there. Maybe that will be the higher yeah. one to get into. I guess we'll find out. But I would have thought more people. I mean, it's would... always the eleven o'clock one. Well, yeah, I know it normally, it normally is, but yeah. um, I did see that they're doing a Disney Parks one, but it's been moved to like a four yep. p.m. panel now. It's not, oh. the, it's not the eleven at the a.m. They've learnt their lesson from last time, I think. Uh, and then uh, Return mm. of the Jedi fortieth anniversary, so I would like to get into that panel, yeah. please. Um, yes. And that's the Monday, I believe, is the big panel on the Monday. No, that's. Bad Batch. Oh, was that Bad Batch? Monday. So is Return of the Jedi yep. like another just interesting? I wonder what how they'll whether they'll do lotteries. Interesting, interesting. I'm okay. Just scrolling through now. Maybe the eleven o'clock doesn't quite have the pull that it used to. So really the only the Ahsoka and the Lucasfilm, one of the 11 o'clocks that are the must get into's, really. I would have thought the Obi Wan would have been higher priority, but I guess it all depends on what you're into. But yeah. Um, because um, obviously there's a panel on the Saturday that through. you're very keen to get into. Yeah. Well, on just to sort of flick through a few more, on Saturday at 5 30, 15 year anniversary um, of. And there's a Hasbro Star Wars and Indiana Jones panel. Hang on, what was on the Saturday? 15th anniversary one of? Clone Wars. Oh, right, Clone Wars. Yep. Sorry, Corey. Um, I don't think Corey's going to be there for that one. Um, yeah, right. So obviously there is an Andor panel as well, Catherine. Yes, the making of Andor Season 1, 3 o'clock Friday afternoon. T. Gilroy D. Luna. Three votes, D. Luna, am... two votes, T. Gilroy, one vote. Um, I don't know. BT, Andy Circus. Andy Circus, A Circus. We'll probably turn up to that, actually. Yeah. Well, that's well, it, yeah. that actually probably makes you feel better that that's not a 11 o'clock one. It'd probably be easier to get into. Worst case, you'd have to queue. Yeah, well, it's in the big you know, room worst too, case isn't it? is. Yeah, it gets streamed to other places. Worst case is that I go in there like the panel before or and hide in the toilet, whatever I can. <laughs> well, well, you I know, it depends. Free, is it is it the after? I mean, is that, that's the weird thing that because some of these bigger panels, because I I feel like that we because like the the Tales of the Jedi We're one I got into four. which was, but I feel like Tales of the Jedi I had a pass for. Or did we just rock up to Tales of the Jedi one? I don't even I'm remember. Pretty sure, we just rocked up. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well, I can't remember. So, yeah. um, if he's forty years of Return of the Jedi is Saturday at two o'clock, right? And that's but yeah, stage. like so, uh, celebration stage. So it's the big room. Yeah, the big room. Is the is the um, Andor one the big room? Andor one's big room and streaming to other rooms, so. I'm not entirely sure. There's nothing in Celebration Stage. There's um, Lucasfilm ending at 12.30 and then there's, at this stage anyway, nothing in Celebration Stage until the 3 o'clock. So, you know, how early I can get there to line up or whatever. Um, but I, if, if, yeah. if, they lot, if they do a lottery on those and they are lottery-based, which... They might be. It just seems like there's an even spread of stuff. Someone yep. will get you into that panel. <laughs> I wouldn't worry. Oh. Somebody will make sure that so – let's put it out now to the listeners. If anybody gets that pass and Catherine doesn't get in, can we just please throw her a bone and make sure that she can get in? I, we, we've got enough friends going, I think, that somebody will be able to take you in. I'm, I'm, it's a shame that Maria – our good buddy, uh, who's a, goes in for the VIP passes, she you know she would have hooked, hooked you up if you need, if you needed the hook up. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. But the thing is also that the secondary part of that, though, Catherine, is that if Diego Luna is in the building. I know that we don't doesn't look like he's doing autographs or 
photos, at least that we know about. Good chance he'll be at the celebration stage again. Yes, probably not that day. Um, well, if he's only gone one day, though. But the question, what time is that panel? Uh, it's late, though. That's the problem because it's like, well, if he does, he yeah, go early. Yeah, three o'clock. So would he show up if that panel goes for an hour? Celebration stage yeah. is done at five, so he wouldn't be at the celebration stage unless he went straight there. So he might be there yeah. earlier. Like the live stage, yeah, like the live on stage. the floor, because we were there till probably nearly six o'clock. Um, That's true, but he got delayed, year. didn't there? Was that weird delay last time? Wasn't there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so this yeah. is the question, isn't it? It's like <laughs> I've got a feeling you'll be going. Oh, do I half hang around where the live stage is just in case he turns up and I can get up the front? You know, because as we established that we know, obviously when we were in uh, Anaheim and we didn't get into the big room, we were in the overflow, but where we saw Diego Luna on the live stage, even if you had been in the front row of the celebration <laughs> stage, you wouldn't have been that close. Like we were like two people no. from the front. Oh. So <laughs> questions. Can you be everywhere at once? We might have to just keep an eye on things. No. No. But, yeah, we'll we'll have to have spies everywhere um, to saboteurs. inform us. <laughs> saboteurs of- to <laughs> knock, the, knock, the, knock the power out for 10 minutes so Catherine can hightail it to the live stage. <laughs> Somebody just needs to stall Andy Gutierrez. Somebody throw a T-shirt cannon I, at her head. <laughs> I don't want anyone to um, pull on the fire alarm. This year, oh, or yeah. set well, off the fire alarm like they did last no, year. No, uh, there's no 40th anniversary Return of the Jedi music panel this year. I tweeted David Collins and asked because I didn't see it on the thing. He's like, oh, I'm afraid not. I can't make it. Um, he was actually very nice. He sent, he sent me a tweet going, well, you can listen to my podcast on it. I'm like, it's not quite the same, but thank you. I'll just listen to it on the plane and pretend. I think I've actually listened to it already. That episode, but that is yeah, a shame that there have. will be no 40th yeah. Jedi panel. David's obviously got other things to do. Oh, they're not going to fly out him for that yeah. panel. Because, you know, I'm a bit – that one was a, a bummer that, um, yeah, that we were in there and it was starting and, yeah, that was when my migraine was just going out of control but then, yeah, the fire alarm got pulled and you all had to evacuate anyway. <laughs> well, the thing with us was, I, mean, I don't know about you, but like Australians going over to America, I was like, this could be anything. This could be active shooter or yeah. some, you know, some kind of crazy thing just because it's well, America and who knows. But um, luckily it was just somebody smoking that's... under toilets or something apparently. But Yeah. But, you know, that's why I made my way to leave the room and the alarm went off and we were told to evacuate. And that's why I basically ran back to you and other others to be like, okay, you you know where I am. Mm. I'm doing <laughs> You're accounted for. safe. <laughs> yeah. So yes. hopefully none of that. Yeah. Luckily Britain's like Australia, so we weren't no active shooters. But, you know, someone might set a fire alarm off. Yeah. Um, I mean, a really solid lot of panels and i think the fact that we're going that's weird that shouldn't that be the main panel shouldn't that be the main like the fact that there's probably you know i think the obi the obi one the andor one could easily both be 11 o'clock so whether 11 o'clock necessarily means yeah. anything now apart from the ahsoka i mean the ahsoka one and the lucas film are the two probably biggest ones because you're seeing stuff that you don't know whereas you know yeah <laughs> You, we, obviously, it'd be cool to see Ewan and Hayden talking Obi Wan, and it'd be cool seeing Diego and Tony Gilroy talking Andor. And you know, Bad Batch. I mean, if Bad Batch will be almost done by then. Maybe you'll get to see the next week's episode or something. Or, uh, but you know, there's a Visions season two panel. I went to the Visions panel last time. That was really good. Um, and there's all small stuff. There's a higher public one. Uh, Christina Ariel, who I'm kind of buddies a little bit on Twitter with. You know, she's a fan of the Pep Pig podcast, which is pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> she's going over to host the Hyper Republic stuff, so that's cool. I know Laura from Force Toast was talking about how she's going to freak out in that panel, so that'll be cool. Um, yeah, so some good stuff. We'll we'll, um, we'll we'll do updates as we go. Obviously, we're doing Mando every week. If there's more celebration stuff that comes up, we'll tack a little bit of celebration talk on the end. Uh, yeah. I think that's about it this week. Thanks for... Stepping up when the when the other guys just dropped off, Catherine, when they couldn't, you know, you're always uh, the one that we can rely on around here. 
when you know little ship with baby Yoda comes in, yep. I'll answer the call. Yeah, exactly. You're just sitting on your throne, <laughs> staring at the floor. <laughs> um, so you had like you sort of spoke before. I mean, it was might have been before we started recording that you did a new episode of your podcast this week with one only Jimmy Dice on. Yes, we talked mainly about Picard uh, because season three of Picard has uh, is out and we're a few episodes in and, oh, my gosh, season three of Picard is fantastic. Um, season one and two, mm, season three is fantastic. Oh, well, that's nice. It's that really, really it right good. Not that I'm, I'm a Trek guy, but I like when people like things, so I'm all for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. It, great. So I think that's it. Uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. We're ready to go around again. I'm, I'm sort of charged on Mando again now. I was feeling a bit like, eh, last week. We'll see if we get the other regulars back next week. But either way, we'll yeah. uh, we'll be here. Yeah. And, yes, I've got to go watch Bad Batch because the episode last week of Bad Batch I was really excited about. Yeah, it was, was good. Like, oh, and this is really good. Actually, just Corey, you were talking about before, he was talking about how, because I think he'd seen them about how good this episode was this week. So I might do the same. I might quickly put the edit up, whack the edit in, whack the artwork up, get it out, and then stick some Bad Batch on before it gets too late. But um, thank you, Catherine, as always. Thank you, Josh, and good night, my little piggies. <laughs> <laughs>